Hello friends, welcome to this presentation from Rising Pearl. I'm a friend, your host Roy. Friends, we are talking about series 1, where we're discussing real numbers. This is episode number 20. And today's topic, friends, is rational numbers, terminating rational numbers. And this is part 2, because in the last part, we started this conversation about rational numbers and terminating rational numbers. So this is an uh, extension of our part 1, or episode number 19. So in the last video, we saw that if x is a rational number with a terminating decimal expansion, if x is a rational number with terminating decimal expansion, then x can be expressed or written in the form of p by q, where both p and q are co-prime. Co-prime means no common factor except 1. And the prime factorization of q, which is the denominator, is always, always of the form 2 to the power m times 5 to the power n, where m and n are non-negative integers. Friends, this is what we saw in our last video. So what it means is that if you have a decimal number which is terminating, that is the terminating decimal expansion, if you have that, then we have noticed that if you express that as a rational number in the form p by q, the denominator always, when you prime factorize the denominator, you always get that in the form of 2 to the power m times 2 to the power m times 5 to the power n, where m and n are non-negative numbers, non-negative integers. Now, is the reverse true? That is, if we say that x is a rational number which is in the form p by q also it is given that the prime factorization of q and please note that q is the denominator if it is given that the prime factorization of q is going to be of this form 2 to the power m times 5 to the power n where m and n are non-negative integers then what can we say about this should be decimal? This should be decimal. Then what can we say about the decimal expansion of x, if at all anything? Meaning that if you notice, this is kind of like the opposite of what we have seen in the last video. In the last video, we were given a decimal expansion of, uh, we were basically given a decimal number, which had terminating decimal expansion. And we realize that the denominator, once you express that in the form p by q, and if you prime factorize q, you always get the denominator in this form. So here, the question is opposite. We have a rational number which is given to us in the form p by q. Also, it is given that the q, prime factorization of q is of this form. So can we say anything about the actual decimal expansion of that rational number? Why don't we find out? So let's take, let's handle this by, you know, going through some examples. So let's say we have something like, um, let's say we have 5 by 8. Why did I pick 5 by 8? Well, the reason is that here the denominator is 2 to the power 3. So this fits in. Remember that we are trying to have 2 to the power m times 5 to the power n and our denominator has to be of this form. So if we have this, uh, what can we tell about the decimal expansion without actually doing anything? We are not going to do the division. But without doing the division, we are trying to predict, if we can, about the decimal expansion. So will it have a terminating decimal expansion or non-terminating? So what we can do is that we can multiply both the numerator and denominator by 5 to the power 3. And you will wonder, why did we pick 5 to the power 3? Simple reason is that, friends, here, for the denominator, I am trying to make it 10 to the power something. So in this case, it will be 10 to the power 3. So I had 2 to the power 3. In order for me, in order for me to make it 10, I have to get 5 to the power 3, so that 2 times 5 becomes 10 to the power 3. But I cannot only multiply one number in the denominator, then that will change the fraction. So I have to multiply 
the same number both in the numerator and denominator. So for the numerator, what it becomes is 5 to the power 4, which is nothing but 25 times 25. So here you have 25 times 25 divided by 10 to the power 3. So if you do 25 square, so if you do 25 square, I think that is 625. If I am not mistaken, that is 625 divided by 1000 and which is nothing but 0.625. So indeed, we were given 2 to the power 3, which is 8, and we got a terminating decimal expansion. Let's take maybe a few more. Let's take one more and uh, let's do how about this time we will do 1, 2, 2 divided by, let us just say that we will do uh, maybe 25. So why did we pick 25 again? Because 25 is 5 square. So I have 1, 2, 2 divided by 5 square. Here I want to multiply this by 2 to the power 2. Again, my goal is to really make it 10 to the power something. So I'm trying to get to the, I'm trying to get to the same power and I'm trying to get the number that we need to make it a 10. So I have to multiply this on both numerator and denominator. So I will have 1, 2, 2 times 2 to the 4 divided by, I will have here 10 times 10. So this one will be, I think if you just do the division, 4 2 is 8, 4 2 is 8, 4 1 is 4, divided by 100, which will be equal to 4.88. And again, I am seeing, we started off with 5 square. This was my denominator. Remember that we are trying to pick a denominator to be of this form. So, in the first case, I pick 2 to the power 3 and in the second case, I pick 5 to the power 2. And again, what I have is I have a terminating decimal number. So, friends, it is no surprise that, again, let's try to answer our question. If we have x given in the form p by q and the prime factorization of q if it is going to be of this particular form, then without doing the actual long division, we can say that x will always have terminating decimal expansion. 